Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm the Rusty Casual. Today's episode will be about one of my oldest acquisitions, something I've had for about eight years. It's right over there. But yeah, before that, I'll be talking about some changes I've made around here. I've improved the lighting, so I wanted to, you know, get better videos. And a lot of people have been complaining about the lighting. The GoPro doesn't pick up darkness when it's seen a bit of light. And yeah, I've started to work on that, even in the automotive side of the garage. Um, so I've got these movable tube lights now. And yeah. So we'll start off with, um, you know, where it started, what happened to it. And um, oh, here's something I wanted to show you guys. This is uh, something I 3D printed. So I'll also be showing you guys how to make cool stuff like this. So from the outline, how you get to this. So it's got the outline and it's also got the logo. It's not a logo, I mean, it's just the text stylized and stuff like that. But it's kind of cool. So, yeah, I'll show you guys how I make this and how it works. So, yeah. I've got a lot of stuff still lying around. This is the, um, this is the bay that I use for my parts. It's really hard to sort this stuff out. There's so much of it. Um, maybe I'll start using it for projects. Like, these seats, they could be seating in the garage. Yeah, a little rough. Maybe I'd use this bumper for my car. I don't know. Um, these could go into the man cave slash office. They're um, Mercedes seats. Really comfortable. Really nice. Rusted frames. So I need to work on that. And yeah, a couple of springs. I don't know. You guys could send me ideas on Instagram. Stuff you've seen online that you want to see being made. I could do that. We've also got my RXZ back in here. And... Here are some pending projects. They've got to become something sooner or later. This is a rebuilt RX100 engine. So I'd like to put it into this, into the RXZ, get it run in and test it out, and then, you know, maybe build something out of it. I don't know. This is a BMW M20 engine. Um, yeah, that is another whole topic, you know, what I want to do with that. I think you guys have an idea. It's a six cylinder, straight six, made it to a five speed gearbox. So that's something really hard to get, you know, the manual gearbox, uh, six cylinder engine out of an older gen car. Um, it's period correct. It'll be like original. Uh, that's the plan with a few tweaks here and there. And that is a spare Fiat twin cam engine I have lying around. That is out of a 1.6 Petra that we had. And a friend of mine and me, we, uh, we took that apart and we plan to put it into the Uno at some point. So yeah, maybe I'll get that car running first. And then we'll talk about that. Yeah, I've got a turbo kit too. But that's for later. And this is my Golf. It's uh, been a rough journey. I've shelved it for now. But we're just going to talk about this for today. And tell you where it's going from here. Where it was. And where it has been. So stay tuned. So yeah, here is the Mark 1. This has been uh, with me since 2014. Back in 2014, I had an Omni. I would use that quite a bit, but um, I was seeing a lot of accidents and how they would just get smashed up. And I'm pretty sure a lot of casualties happened due to that. Those cars were great back in the 90s when traffic was less, speeds were less, and uh, they basically helped a lot of people start businesses. And um, they were great vehicles back then. Uh, maybe in Japan, they would work where you have those small little roads, but now things are too fast over here. And I thought, hey, why don't I replace that car? Uh, we thought of putting uh, putting a gypsy in its place, but that never worked out, you know? I never found a nice gypsy. And later on, I figured out a gypsy is far too rough for me. It'll probably break my back. But uh, in my rear view mirror one day, I noticed a yellow Mark One Golf. And I decided to follow the guy, talk to him a bit. I was a little, yeah, I guess that's a bit creepy. Please don't do that. Um, but yeah, I followed the guy, stopped him and say, hey, I also have a Mark II Jetta. And um, yeah, I spoke to him a bit and I decided, hey, why don't I get one of these? So I started checking on OLX and I found that, um, I found this car. This car was for about 80,000, got it down to 70. And I was talking to the owner, he's saying, hey, it's running fine. But I was in the West Coast and he was in the East. And um, back then my close friend of mine, Abbas, he was in Chennai. So I said, okay, why don't you check out the car? He checked it out. He said, you know, it works, it's fine. The only thing is that the brakes are a little 
hard. They need some work. But that was an understatement. That was completely an understatement. The brakes on this were horrible. Uh, so one or two weeks later, I went over on the weekend, took a bus there, and um, I saw the car. I saw yeah, I noticed it was not too bad, but when I took it for a drive, the brakes were so hard. They were they were just horrible. Uh, even the clutch was hard. I had to really step on everything. And what the owner basically said was, don't worry, this is like ABS, you just use gear braking. And um, what happened was I said, okay, what the heck, I've come all the way. Why don't I take the car home? And um, I set off on my way, headed to Abbas's place. Um, and in the morning I was like, it's not that bad. The car doesn't look that bad. When it was just parked in a corner and I looked at it, it was kind of cool with all its boxy edges and its corners. This is a really sharp corner. But yeah, it, it just looked really cool. And I said, okay, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can, I can go with this. And what happened was then I headed to Bangalore. There was no problem on the way except my, my phone battery dying out. Um, that was always a problem. And Google Maps being a real pain, uh, that gave me a really wrong route through Bangalore. I guess you guys know about that. You go through this inside road, outside road, and then you're stuck. But yeah, that's what happened. And um, I brought the car to Bangalore, met my friends over there, and they set me off in the morning. That was the whole MBTC group, Mercedes-Benz Touring Club. Um, there's some guys that I met back in Pune when I took my wagon there. That's another story. I'll tell you guys about my wagon later. Right now, we're just talking about this. Please don't get distracted, especially me. Um, but yeah, what happened was then from Bangalore, I decided, okay, no problems. I'll head to uh, head back to Goa. So I did that in one go. And what happened was the only problem I had was on the guts. Um, the guts were really horrible. What happened was people were drive these trucks basically were driving me off the road. Maybe I got a little poke in the tire over there. And uh, the owner had said, don't worry about the tires. Uh, you don't need a Stepney. There was no Stepney in this car. Um, don't worry about a Stepney because these are tubeless tires. So yeah, I went on that and I had no spare tire. But five kilometers from my house, I went to the petrol pump and I basically tried to get out of the car and I almost fell down because my legs had collapsed. The, the brakes and the clutch were way too hard. So I just couldn't walk. And I realized, hey, one of my tires was punctured. And um, a friend of mine came, uh, I wasn't too far from home, he got me a spare tire and I swapped that and I was fine. And I used the car for a couple of, couple of months actually. Till then I thought, hey, why don't I get this fixed up, get it restored. And back then I didn't know the friends I had in Goa. Um, you know, it would have been far more different now if I had done it. But um, back then I didn't know anyone and I thought, hey, there's this friend of mine in Bangalore, uh, in Pune who knows a workshop will get it done. And he'll also, my friend would source the parts and overlook this whole thing. And um, yeah, what we did was we drove it from Goa to Pune, thinking we would take a bus to Bombay and come back. But what we did was we said, hey, when we reach Pune, there's no problem, the car's running fine. Drove it to Bombay, then left it on the way back. And um, yeah, started the process of getting it fixed. But over the course of, I guess, another six months, the car wasn't getting done. It was taking a long time. Uh, I visited sometimes and expecting to take the car home. And imagine you call the guy up and he says, hey, don't worry, come. And uh, you come all the way and the car's not ready. But the, the time when I actually had to take the car, the, the head wasn't even on the engine. But he said the next day, and I didn't know much. Honestly, it's a learning process. You learn as you go. And I didn't know much about this. And he says, hey, don't... Don't worry, you take the car tomorrow. And this is when I was driving alone. Even when bringing the car, I was far more brave back then. And I don't take these risks anymore. Um, if the car is old, or actually, I, I wouldn't even take a car alone on a road trip because there are always problems. So what happened was on the way back, basically the engine ceased. It slowly started giving these weird noises at higher RPMs and that RPM started reducing the noises started coming at lower and lower rpms till finally around kolhapur at around nine to ten o'clock the car broke down and i was something like 20 years old um yeah and i'm like this thin kid and yeah this i thought i was gonna get mugged i got under the car the exhaust also fell off got under the car and some villagers came they helped me and they realized that the car couldn't get done 
so they took me to their they took me to their hut actually and um, they helped me out they were really nice i was really surprised and i left the car over there in kolapur moved it on to the other side of the highway where there was a workshop um over there and they said they'd they'd look at it for a while look over it and i asked the workshop where i got this car done to take responsibility they were first like okay we understand but later on they said no um that's far later on finally i i convinced them and we got the car to a, some place outside on i don't know sangli or something like that it was just on a hills on a hill and um, the car was in a workshop and a friend of mine was traveling one day uh, on a holiday and he says hey i see this mark this little golf i said yeah uh, go take some pictures uh, i was also into making these groups with uh, different car owners uh who have mark 1s or mark 2s or water cooled golfs i mean they're only water cooled but water cooled classic bws that was the idea and um so i he went back and it turns out that that car on the side of the road all dusty full of muck was my own car and um basically then i i tried to get it back i tried to get them to do the job i had to get the car done somewhere else but this engine has been through so much that uh i probably put in 200 300 kilometers after that rebuild and uh it still blew up you know it still started throwing out oil uh two years back and i decided to give up on it and uh take up this project once the other cars are done i have a lot of other cooler projects that will get done easier and i thought okay i'll put this i'll shelve this and when i get the right donor for it i will rebuild this car and make it into something crazy it's not possible to make this an original car again so yes over here you have a vrs engine cover and uh, i can show you guys what exactly happens with the brakes i hope that holds so what basically happens with the brakes is you need for power braking you need this this provides the vacuum it used to go over here and um this pump kind of fails so what a lot of golf owners do is they put in a tata alternator that has an attached vacuum pump so it gets oil from the engine and it uh, it generates a vacuum and it uses this vacuum for the brakes but this car has been through so much of localization you know oh shit it still has diesel in it um yeah it's been through so much of localization that i think it needs to be reborn into something else something crazier you know if uh, if this video works well and you guys actually share it and and send it to your friends like i've asked you to maybe i will do this yeah this is plumbing piping this is how badly this job has been done this was from a time when i wasn't so involved i've never been under a car at that point and um i thought hey this is too much for me to handle i'd give it to a workshop but today I do something stupid like this. I chop this up. I put it over a VRS or an uh, E36, make it rear-wheel drive. I don't know. Let's see what donors I get. Maybe somebody will donate me one. I don't know. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like, please share. You know, like share it with all your friends, everyone you know. Um, that would be really helpful. And um, even with your family, if they like cars or if they don't, just just force them. please okay i'm joking but anyways yeah uh like share subscribe let me know what you guys think about this what do you want to see happen to this or what do you want to see in the next videos i've been doing some fabrication videos and stuff like that uh different type of stuff and i'll start working on the cars soon showing you guys a little bit of what i do on them um yeah so thanks for watching and see you guys soon